the sun melts the cold from my bones cut and dry. In the darkness from my eyes, breathing in, pulling life into my lungs as a child. I am born again. Eastern sun melts the cold from my bones, cut and rise. Take the darkness from my eyes, breathing in, pulling life into my lungs as a child. I am born again. Eastern sun melts the cold from my bones, cut. Take the darkness from my eyes, breathing in, pulling life into my lungs as a child. I am born again, eastern sun. Thank you. 
Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I see some of you already sharing in the chat where you're, where you're coming from, where you are. I love as we kind of settle in here. You can let us know, let me know where you are. I see Australia already. I spent my junior year abroad in Adelaide. Love Australia, Arkansas. I'm in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Arizona for Thanksgiving. Yay. I'm all over. Well, it's so good to see you guys. Thank you for joining. It's been a while. Um, besides like little lives um, here and there, I really haven't done like an in-depth kind of workshop. And I said over a year, but it's actually probably been two years maybe. Um, so just for myself and for you, I wanted to go over the structure a little bit so you know what to expect um and then some like river banks of what we will be talking about what i won't be talking about um so i'm gonna be down here this is my office welcome to my office <laughs> i'll be down here for probably the first 15 20 minutes um just kind of going over what's been new um in my world and it all is related to fertility like i see everything that happens in my life as a woman as related energetically to the energy of fertility which is why it feels important to share it with you and why I decided to share it with you I actually thought about it um, a lot and even as early as this morning I wasn't exactly sure how much or what I was going to share um, but in the spirit of showing up as a whole woman um, I'm going to um, also, what's been happening with the business in the past two years, um, the company has grown. Uh, what that means in terms of like being a social media internet company now, uh, there's, you know, that's like the framework we're working within, what that means. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Um, some goings on that are exciting, that offerings we're going to have. Um and then uh, we'll take a little five minute break. Connie and Jack are waiting upstairs. Uh, Connie is the 
manager, head of all the production and fulfillment. Um, so she's over in the production facility every day. Um, and especially this time of year, I'm sure she and her body can use a little support, a little love. So she will be my model for the fertility womb massage. Um, and then Jack, you might know her. She's one of our moon sister supports and uh, she will be doing the filming. So you might not see her, but she's, he'll be behind the volume. Not enough. Let me see if I can turn this up for you guys. Thank you. Um, usually my volume is so loud. So let's see. Oh, hold on. Um, let's see. Is everybody having trouble hearing me? I can hear fine. All right. Well, let me just, I'll turn it up a little bit. I talk a little bit quietly sometimes. So no, it seems like it's okay. This seems to be as high as it's going to go. Volume is good. Okay. Thank you. If the volume is hard for you, just turn up your speaker. <laughs> Um, and then Allie, I'm going to unmute her. Hi, Allie. Um, she's also one of our Moon Sister support, and she also uh, manages the group. So you probably know her well if you joined us through the group. So she's in New Mexico, New Mexico. So we will unmute her later on, and um, she'll kind of be fielding your questions. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you could hear Wanda. <laughs> Um, so she'll be fielding your questions. So I did want to talk a little bit about what, um, what we will, like what questions I will be answering, what we're going to be kind of doing. Um, one of the reasons I kind of energetically didn't feel called to do lives for a while was because I found that every time I went on, um, it was kind of like, what tea, what tea, what, you know, for this, for that, which I get, I mean, those are totally valid questions. Um, but just so you know, um, if you want a specific, like I have PCOS and endometriosis, you know, or if I've had a couple miscarriages or whatever the questions are, our moon sister support train uh, team has been so, they're so great at answering those questions. Um, they've been trained and educated. They kind of really are, um, really able to field those questions for you. And if they don't know one of those questions, um, they will ask me. So um, if that's one of your questions, I know a lot of you, probably 90% of you might've come here like wanting that kind of information. Um, and that's available to you all the time. Just go on our Facebook group or go on Facebook or Instagram and direct message us. And one of our Moon Sister support team will get back to you. Um, for me, I don't feel like that is actually the best use of my time here, not even for me, but for you, like um, what I feel like the best way I can serve you is to really tap into um, like that, that energetic feels like it's kind of here, like this is the thing you do for this and that's all valid and important, but I feel like what I want to offer you and how I best serve is to kind of like tap into the, the realm of the, the feminine and our fertility um, and so that's what I'm here to do today. <laughs> yeah, let's go deeper. Um, and that's really what, what I'm called to do. Like that's what resonates with me. And that's what makes me feel like I keep coming back for it is those deeper layers. And, um, you know, also I recognize that, um, you know, in terms of growing the company online, I mean, as of a few years ago, I was only doing one-on-one -on -one work. Um, and like in the room with a woman, like going to <laughs> the places, you know, where we needed to go. And um, I miss that. I really miss that a lot. And it's been, um, I don't want to even say it's been a challenge for me. I've just been very aware of as the company has grown and we've become like an internet company and a social media based company. Um, I've just been kind of watching the trajectory and um, like feeling awareness of like how to stay um, intentional here and how to have integrity with what we're doing in a framework that is not always um, integrity based, honestly, like social media mar marketing um, often, um, you know, preys on people's insecurities or, um, you know, the consumer 
driven world is kind of about keeping your attention, whether that attention is good or bad. It's about keeping your attention. Um, and I recognize that often when we're working with fertility, um, what is activated in us can be um, all of the the deepest stuff, like our wounding and our fear or shame or feelings about not being enough, feelings of worth. Um, and I feel a real um, responsibility of, um, you know, both protecting myself and the company, but really protecting you in in ways that I'm not, I'm not always sure how, you know, um, but know that I'm working on it. And I'm always um, aware of, of that, like feeling like I recognize what you guys are coming here with. And um, it feels important to me to be able to, to meet you there. And um, I know that like doing social media stuff, like I don't consider myself an influencer. I have no desire to be an influencer. And so I have felt myself like pulling back from the company, like uh, the brand in terms of like how much I bring of myself. Um, and uh, I don't want to do that anymore. I kind of want to come as a whole woman and meet you as whole women. And uh, I hope it can be in discussion we can have about how to continue to do that. Um, you might have seen if you get our emails that um, we've switched over to more educational emails. I really wanted to get away from like discounts and like you guys know that people just raise their prices in order to drop their prices so like I really want to um just continue to um be really intentional about what we're doing here um so um let me see so yeah so I'll be answering questions about like what is going on in the work we're doing um, but I would ask if possible, like if you kind of let yourself trust that whatever, you know, you might be coming here today with your mind wanting to know stuff, like your mind wanting to, like, what should I do this day? And, but um, if you could be open and maybe trust that your soul and your spirit and your energy field will receive what you need. Um, and my intention is to give you what you need. And I know that that's kind of not maybe possible for a hundred plus people, but that's really my desire. And my goal is to really um, meet each of you where you're at on some level. And it might not be like the exact tea you need on what day, but know that you can always reach out to our moon sister team and they will get back to you. Um, let's see. So the few things that I wanted to kind of announce uh, that we're going to be doing um, on those notes is that, um, if you get my emails, you might already know this, but I sent an email about out kind of like inquiring how many of you might be interested in a Wisdom of the Womb certification program to become a, fer a fertility coach. And um, I kind of really have been wanting to, like, this has been like my, I've been thinking about it and dreaming about it and like, ah, so excited about it. And I was like, this is going to be like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of work. So let me just like, make sure you guys actually want this. Like, thinking like maybe 10 people would be like, that sounds cool. And like a hundred of you wrote back. So it's, uh, it's in the works. I am <laughs> sitting with it and really, um, also it feels important that we go to the deep levels there too. Like, I want you to be able to really, um, like this work, just so you know, it like works me constantly. It's not just like, I'm telling you what to do. It's like, I am worked by it. And um, that's my goal too, is that as you do the work, you um, you uncover parts of yourself and places in yourself. And that's what fertility work is from looking at your, your um, chats coming up. Yay. Okay. Well, I'm working on it. It might take a while, but um, I'm working on it. Um, the other thing is um, going back to like bringing myself more to this community. I have felt like I kind of built this community and um, worked on growing it and encourage you guys to like come as your full selves and be vulnerable. And at the same time, I've kind of been like pulling myself out of it a little bit because, you know, there's a lot of you out there and there's one of me and that can sometimes feel vulnerable. Um, but in the spirit of recognizing that our vulnerability as women is also one of our strengths, um, I am considering opening up like a membership group um, to really 
uh, like talk about the real stuff, you know, <laughs> the stuff that maybe is not like, yay, babies and hope all the time, but like the real stuff that comes up. Um, because that's actually what I want and need. Um, and so I'm just going to share this with you. Um, not because I want, like, I'm not actually feeling so much like it's easier for me to give than receive, honestly. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to share this just so you know what's been going on and that like, I'm doing this work too. Um, but I actually ended my marriage in July. Um, we're working hard to like, there's a lot of love there. And, um, I really feel like, you know, I'm going to cry a little bit. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's the work that I've been doing here with you guys and for you guys and around, <laughs> thank you, I'm looking, um, around the feminine and around like bringing ourselves fully has kind of like, um, just helped me recognize that I needed to really move forward in, in ways and in relationship and certainly doing work around the feminine. Um, it's like, forced me to really look at, um, the ways I interact with the energetic, at least of the masculine. And, um, I will always love my husband. We were together for 20 years. He's a beautiful man. Um, and it feels like, uh, just really we're working on the recognition that like we, we did it right. And this is the next right thing. And, um, that just because something ends doesn't mean that it wasn't, um, successful. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, and then the next thing was that just within the past month, I had a, a mammogram that was a little bit freaky and had a biopsy that was also a little bit atypical. Um, and I've been really exploring the energetic of the breast and it feels like there's so much there. Oof, I'm getting emotional about that too, but, um, yeah, um, I actually feel I'm just, you guys are all there. <laughs> so I feel very like aware of you, but um, it's been scary, but it also has been um, like when I say like the, the hard things or the opportunities for us to really like explore what is there for us um, has been huge. And I found like so much energy clearing and like cord cutting and stuff with breasts around the lover and the mother energy and giving and nurturing and like um, I actually feel really confident that I'm going to be fine. Like I actually have felt into it and I feel really, um, really confident there. And of course I have my, my herbs and my energy workers and, you know, I've been doing all the things, um, but I'm sharing this with you. I want to make clear that I'm actually not, um, wanting like advice or like, oh, my sister, like I'm not actually, um, wanting that. It's more that I wanted to let you know that this, this is work that I'm doing behind the scenes. And I feel like, uh, you know, just know that I'm walking the walk with you and like going to the, the hard places. And, um, I feel like the energy of the feminine, it's like the darkness and it's about going inward and really feeling what's there. And uh, so coming soon, probably <laughs> will be stuff around like energetic of the breast. Um, but yeah, that's why I really wanted to do this membership group, because I feel like these are things that I would love to talk about with you. And sometimes like the the 8,000 member group or like the 40,000 Instagram page is just not the place to do that. So I really appreciate you guys all being here. And uh, I feel you. That was a little bit like... <laughs> Up until like the second I said it, I wasn't sure I was going to say it. So thank you. Um, and now moving on, um, we are going to be, I just promised Dave that I would, <laughs> I would tell you guys this and not forget. So I like have it in bold, like, don't forget to do the thing where you tell them what the thing is. <laughs> so um, we're going to be doing the, the three oils that I'm going to use on Connie today, the castor oil, the womb healing oil, and the womb warming oil. When you purchase those, you will get a free moxa and extinguisher. I brought them upstairs, but I'm going to show you how to do moxa today too. Um, and so you'll just have to add the thing to the cart and use the, I'll send you the link in the email after this, but you'll get the moxa and the extinguisher for free. Um, trust that I will let you know, um, like the timing of when to do these things and timing not to do them the best. I talk about all of that. So, um, if you're able to kind of save some questions towards the end, but if you feel like I'm really going to skip something, feel free to ask, but, um, 
sometimes I like get pulled out of what I'm doing a little bit and it's hard for me to be in both places at once. So Allie will be like noting questions um, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, I am going to uh, bring everything upstairs. Um, so let's take a little five minute break. I'll see if I could figure out. I don't know how to play. You know how you can like play the music from the thing so it doesn't come through your microphone, but it comes through your computer. <laughs> I like couldn't figure out how to do that. <laughs> so um, it might just be like a quiet. Let's see if I could. I don't know. Let's see if I could play something. You guys are. Let's play this one. This looks like a good one. You might hear me like jostling a bit as I bring everything upstairs, but we'll be back in five minutes. You guys could take a little potty break and and we'll be upstairs. Okay, bye. To let myself go, to let myself go, is the only way of being. There's no use telling me, there's no use taking a step back, a step back and Upstairs. So, uh, sorry guys, I'm yeah. trying to find a good. <laughs> I'll show you. Mm -hmm. you maybe it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, maybe right here. Like mm -hmm. Two. We got a stack of books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, more than the same Oh, 
All right. Okay, well, that we still need a little bit more effort. Well, we'll get this figured out. Yeah, I All right. So um, we're going to start with wound massage. And uh, just so you guys know, like if you watch the, um, the video on YouTube that I have, this might not be exact. Um, I really go by feel. And so um, you don't have to be like, I have to do exactly the same thing. It's just more, more of like a where we can go and what we can feel. I'm going to be working a little quickly, just in the, um, just paying attention to time. So just know like you can really go slow and, and feel, um, you can do this on yourself, but it's a really nice thing also to have your partner do with you or for you. Um, because it just helps you feel like a, a way to connect. Um, sometimes if you're doing it to yourself, you might be feeling more with your hands, um, which is great. It's like part of, part of the work, but sometimes if you're having it performed on you, you can kind of go inward in a way. Um, I like wound massage because it's a really great way to, like I was talking about, like go into the thing. Sometimes we're so much like in our head, what does this mean? Um, this is a recommendation for that I could say because I'm in Colorado, but um, sometimes it's really good to like get high and do some wound massage because <laughs> it's okay. Turn the music off. Turn the music off. Okay, thanks, Sally. Yeah. Um, Alexa, stop. <laughs> is that good? Okay, thanks. You know what? Oh, that makes sense. Let's unmute Allie. Hold oh, on, yeah. I forgot that part. Here. Should be able to do that. Thanks, Allie. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I was talking about getting high. <laughs> um, just if you're not in Colorado or, you know, that's where we are, so it's okay, but is, is she unmuted? Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Allie. Hi, um, guys. We'll kind of feel to them. We talked about that before. Um, but really going inward and sometimes seeing what comes up, like if you can close your eyes when you do this, sometimes you'll have like snippets or images. It can almost be like a dream like a dreamscape um, where our unconscious will sometimes bring messages to us that our conscious mind just won't pay attention to because either they don't make sense or um, they don't really fit. Um, I was telling you about some of the stuff that go was going on for me. I had this dream about um, a little girl who like fell and broke her nose and like I scooped her up and was like, oh, I have to comfort the inner child. You know, that's what it must be about, like comfort my inner feminine. And I kept coming back to the dream and the broken nose. And I was dreams are kind of funny and they're not always that like um uh I want to say they're not elegant, but they're not always like uh they don't take themselves that seriously. So what I was coming back to and what finally I kind of got that clicked and resonated was like, oh, like the one of me that knows that like knows what the fuck is gonna happen <laughs> in a month from now or a year from now, like that's the part that needed some comfort. So with this kind of thing, like let the things that come up, it might be colors, it might be images, it might be um, memories. We store so much in our wounds. And sometimes as we're unblocking something, we can just get like a, a snippet. And sometimes it's not even ours. It might be like intergenerational. It might be from our lineage. So just kind of to let yourself be open to what comes. Um, so typically I'll start, and I spoke with Connie before, and she just finished her period, so it's actually a good time to do it. Um, I wore clothes that I could get super oily, so I just don't wear the nicest clothes when you do this. Um, so usually you can start by just feeling. I use the back of my hand, just feeling for temperature. And Connie is actually nice and warm underneath her belly button, which is really good. Sometimes we're cold underneath our belly buttons. And that usually means there's like a little bit of blockage above. Um, there's a little bit of extra heat like up top up here, which could be some like liver stagnation. So we'll work through that. But just like getting your hands on both for you to get used to the touch of being touched and also for, you know, temperature. And then I'm going to start with wound healing oil, just because it's my favorite. I do get some questions about like what oil to use when. Um, you might change it seasonally, like during the winter, you might just want to use warming oil more. You, um, 
you might. Oh, these are our new bottles. I'm going to be using some of our old bottles too, but um, you'll see some of our new stuff. Um, I warmed them. I just took like boiling water, put them in a cup, and then popped these in for the past 20 minutes so they're nice and warm. You don't want to put like cold, cold oil on your on your belly. I'm sorry, my hands are a little cold too. Carol, also. Yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we get a lot of questions. And then you could just start really like going in. You want to go, uh, what is this, clockwise? Because that's the direction that our intestines go. So I just go up the right, across the top, and down the left. Um, I'm just going to talk a bit while I'm doing this, but you can like just notice that you can start kind of feeling. You don't want to start like digging in right away, but um, just noting changes in tension or little area where there might be some like a little more like hardness or softness. Um, one of the main questions we get, so I'm going to answer it right off the top, is a uh, when to do this and when not to do this. Often we get the question, should you not do this post ovulation, like your two week wait? It's actually a really good time to do it. If you know you're not pregnant or if you're willing to give yourselves a few months without trying to get pregnant after ovulation, because often right before a period, that's when we get so much liver stagnation. That's when we get a lot of blockage. That's when we get a lot of like buildup of energy. So it's actually a really good time to do it. I have never met someone who did womb massage and then miscarried because of womb massage. Um, but just for liability reasons, uh, which is the reality of, of things, is that we need to tell you not to do it if you think you're pregnant post ovulation. Um, but it is really good to do after you ovulate. So I would try to, especially if you tend to have cramps or you tend to have endometriosis or fibroids, um, like give yourself a few months to try not to get pregnant, but to do the womb massage um, because it's just a really important part of, of the treatment. Um, if you just absolutely don't wanna wait and you want to keep trying to get pregnant while you're doing it, just do it before, before ovulation. Um, also, can you do it when you're bleeding? You can do it when you're bleeding, but just be like, recognize that your blood is moving and so sometimes if you do womb massage, you're like invigorating your blood more. Um, for some of you, that just might be too much movement, too much energy. So you might just want to not go deep or not use the castor oil, um, just use more gentle touch. Um, as far as like womb warming or womb healing, in the luteal phase, the warming is really good. If you have things that tend to get stuck, right? Like heat moves things. You think of like boiling water, like heat makes things move, whereas cold or womb healing is not cold, but the warming just tends to get the move through blockages. So if you have endometriosis or fibroids or cramps, that's really good to do. If you have more like um, uh, I mean, womb healing is really good for cramps too. Womb healing is what I use most. You could also put womb warming on your back. That's really nice. Um, high FSH would be great with womb healing. Okay. So I don't know if you want to like bring the camera I'm over a little bit, but that way I can show you what I'm doing. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah. So just bear with us while we... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically I've just been kind of going in slow circles, kind of feeling where there's little pockets. And so I'm going to feel Connie's hip bone over here on the right. And I'm just going to go in a little bit and just begin to go upwards. And I'm getting a little bit of, of pressure in, but I'm not really digging. Just let me know if it feels too much at any point. And then we're going to go all the way up to just below her rib cage. And like as you're going, you'll notice like a little, little bumpy kind of area. Some of you might almost feel like pearl kind of feelings. Then we go across the transverse abdominal. And then down the descending colon. Sorry, transverse colon. And we're just kind of feeling and 
the digestive organs are really related to reproductive health, which is why we start with that as well. It helps with just bringing blood flow and energy to the area. And then I go down to that other hip bone. And um, I'll probably do that like three or four times slowly. Um, and then you can kind of go in and feel where there might be like a little pocket of a bubble or it might be like a little bumpy kind of feeling and just kind of work with it. Like you can feel it in inside too. That's a good thing about doing it with yourself is you can just like stay on a spot. Sometimes if I have cramps or something come up, I'll like stay on a spot for 10 minutes and just kind of work it. Um, I do then come under the rib cage. The liver is in here. So we can just kind of really feel, does it feel hot or swollen? Our liver processes so much from the food we eat to the things we drink to environmental toxins, all of our hormones kind of get processed and transformed through the liver. So working on our liver is so, so, so important for fertility. And even though the liver is just on one side, we do both sides um, just because energetically and with the channel, uh, there's, see this side's actually a little cold. And Connie, it's cooler, which I don't think the coolness is a problem. I think it's actually the liver side is a little warm. So I might go back and work a little bit more on that side. And we're just bringing blood flow to the area. Like if you're like, what are you doing? And what's that? It's really, we're just bringing blood flow. Like wherever there's those pockets of tension or stagnation, energy it's just like a, a pocket of energy that gets stuck and so we're just moving through it and working through it the ren line or conception vessel in chinese medicine will begin right from in between the like right up here where the rib cage kind of connects we'll start right in the middle and we'll just kind of work our way down and i'm just doing slow circles and kind of feeling there might be like, oh, this area feels like a little tender. So we might stay there a little bit. And again, I'm doing this pretty quickly and just like kind of going over all of the passes, um, but you could do them a bunch of times. Often like around the belly button, there's a lot of energy. So sometimes I might even circle around or stay on top. This channel is related so much to fertility. It's related to yin and blood. So we'll kind of, I usually don't dig into the belly button, but I'll like work my, I'll jump over it. And then we'll work all the way down to the top of like right above the pubic bone, which is where our uterus is. Ooh, that's what a girl's laying in there. <laughs> and so this, like this line here, when I'm about to get my period or I have my period, I might stay on this line, like just underneath the belly button to above the pubic bone for like 15 minutes, just with my hands and some oil and feeling what's what's there. It's really good if when you do it, you can like close your eyes and really feel from inside. And then so to feel your pubic bone, you use the back of your hand and you'll kind of um, just feel around and then you'll go right above that. And that's where your uterus is. So it's nice to just kind of feel like, is there tension? Do you notice anything? Again, this isn't the kind of thing you can like get right or wrong or do right or wrong. It's just like, yeah, just feel, you know, this is your body. Just feel what you feel, be with what you feel. And sometimes just the act of massaging can like shift a tilted uterus. You don't need to know if it's tilted, but sometimes you can just shift it into a more, um, 
kind of conducive to pregnancy position. And so I'm just feeling like there's like little area, like almost like pearly things. So we'll just, so I kind of work my way and then using both hands, I'll come out to either side and just kind of do the same kind of going up. And I go all the way from the center again out to the pubic bones. What's the time? I want to get like a time or 1245. Perfect. Okay. So ideally you can do this for like at least like I'm probably doing this in like less than 10 minutes and it feels super, super rushed. So I would take at least 15 minutes each time you do this. If you can do it for 30 minutes, that's ideal. You can do it every week. You can do like a variation of it even. Like sometimes I'll just like take a bath and I'll do it in the bath, you know, not like um, every day, but you can do it as long as you're not like digging and really, you know, you can do it, a version of it every day. So Connie definitely has some like energy and some of this will just be like muscular or tendons, but all of that stuff links and holds our ovaries, our uterus, our fallopian tubes. So even if something feels kind of muscular or tendoner, tendoner, <laughs> tendinal, um, you can come back and kind of, so like I might work a little bit more in here. And then tender. Tender, <laughs> sorry, tender tendon. Um, <clears throat> I've just been doing this with the wound healing oil, but I want to show you how I would use castor oil and also show you how to set up a castor oil pack. Sure. Again, recognizing we're doing this really fast. So I just put a whole bunch of. Is that good? Yeah, I'm going to bring you over there in a bit, but Perfect. so is this too hot? Yeah, I like fill up the belly button with castor oil. Castor oil is really thick and rich and it helps, it like pulls things in and helps just bring them down. So after you use a castor oil pack, you might notice you go to the bathroom more. It's really detoxifying because it pulls out a lot of the toxins with it. Um, it. It's amazing to do if you have like any digestive upset, if you tend to have any kind of like IBS or colitis. Um, it's awesome if you have any kind of cramping, um, if you have endometriosis, fibroids, it just really, so I'll put that on and um, this won't be, well, let me think of the best way to do this. All right, I think I'll, yeah. Maybe like over here. Maybe this way. I think just like right here, and I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I used right to do here. it all. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. Here we go. We're we're winging this. So I will heat up heat up water. I used to just like keep it in a hot towel caddy that I used in my office um, while I was uh, doing the massage and then I, it'd be hot and I put it on after, but I know a lot of you don't have that. So let's just a little bit. So um, I'm gonna heat up water and then I... think it's gonna be warm, but I have like a... Um, a rolled up towel that I've kind of rolled up like in half. Uh, let's see. Do you want to go? For yeah, the in half like, like this. this. So I've just heated that up. I like rolled it, and then I um rolled it in half this way. And it's not now, but it should be like super hot. Then I just take some saran wrap. And we put that over the top of it. This is just so you don't like ruin all of your towels. Although definitely use like a dingy towel like I am. Then you'll take your uh, flannel that we send you. I cut mine just because Connie's tiny. You could like cut it in half if you want. We send you extra so you can play with it. Um, and then just like, I'm going to dump it, like dump castor oil on. Like you want a lot of it. 
because it you really want it to soak in and penetrate. And then so if you're heating this up, like you could pop it in the microwave for a bit, you would just fold it in half like that and then roll it up and then pop it in the microwave for like 20, 30 seconds. And then I'm just gonna, again, for time, open it up and put it right on Connie's belly. So we'll bring this over and you just pop the whole thing on. You can have some like extra hot towels. Okay, sorry. No, you're good. You can have some like extra hot towels. Sorry. Um, available sorry. or like a heating pad or something to go over the top. And ideally you can just leave this on for like 20 minutes. It's good to do like while you are listening to meditative music or we'll leave that on. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what's that. So this is what you will get. The matzah and the extinguisher when you order the three oil set. It also comes with a flannel. Um, so one of the biggest questions is like, the matzah is not lighting. It doesn't seem lit. So we have two different kinds of matzah. Yeah, the smoky matzah. Um, this is not what comes in our bundles. We kind of stop selling it in our bundles just because it's so smoky. We recognize some of you live in places where you can't have all the windows open all the time. I don't actually use this one as much. I use the smokeless one just because I don't want to be breathing in smoke all the time. Um, some people do just really like the smoky one. They feel like they can just feel it working more, like it penetrates better. I don't feel that way, but we have both available. Um, so if you order moxa and you want smoke, you have to like indicate that you want smoke. Otherwise you'll get the smokeless one. Um, so in order to light it, I'm going to show you because it often doesn't look lit. Um, let's go this way. I can bring this over. Yeah. Let's see. People will come here. Okay. Yeah, we're, uh, we're improvising, guys. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> we're figuring out the camera work. Sorry. Um, all right. So I will actually use a candle. So I don't need to like hold a lighter and burn my thumb. And I just like hold this moxa. The first time you light it, it takes longer. I literally just hold it in there for until it lights. And sometimes it takes a while. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk to you about moxa. Moxa is amazing for cutting through scar tissue, for invigorating. Again, it's like penetrative heat. So heat gets things to move. So if we have any kind of, um, stagnation or blockage, endometriosis, fibroids, cysts, even cramping, any kind of blood stagnation, blood stasis. If we have cramping, it's an indication that we have some stuck blood. That's just what it means. And then if that blood continues to accumulate over time, it can become fibroids, endometriosis. Um, it's also really good, again, heat rises. So it's great for lifting our energy. So if we tend to have recurrent miscarriage, um, any kind of prolapse of any kind, moxa is really good. It also, if we have had any kind of abdominal surgeries and we have internal scarring, if we've had ectopic pregnancies, if we have blocked tubes, um, moxa has been, there's been studies done on moxa that can actually penetrate through scar tissue. So this looks like it's lit. I don't know, let's see. Um, it kind of will just look like it has some ash on it. But if you tap off that ash, it's actually an ember. See, so I just, you could blow on it and you'll see the embers. So, and so when you order moxa from us and when you order any kind of massage oil or anything, you do get, um, tutorial pages on how to use it. So make sure um, you check your email for those. If by chance you like don't input your email, um, you can just go to the product page, like go to the Moxa page or go to the oil page. And the bundle guide of how to use things will be on the bottom of the page. So I blow on it a lot, but it's lit. So it's not like fire. It never catches fire. The smoky one will catch fire actually, um, but then you want to blow it out. So basically, we have two different reasons why we would do moxa. One is that we do it to build and increase like warmth and kidney warmth and energy to tonify. And so um, 
we will for that kind of work we'll do slow circles so i'll show you that first i'm going to start with the bottom of connie's foot which is kidney one and it's kind of like right i don't know if jack can get around it's like if you go down the, <laughs> the middle toe you'll like come right down and it's right in this little it's like a little divot right there so when i do it I, like since i'm doing it on connie and i can't feel what she's feeling i'll keep my finger there so that i can start to notice when I'm starting to feel warm. And then I'll ask Connie to let me know either when she's starting to feel warm and then when it feels too hot. And so if I notice that I'm feeling warmth in my finger like long before Connie is feeling it in her foot, that might be an indication that there's some kidney deficiency. When our kidneys are deficient, we might not be able to carry a pregnancy to term. So really boosting our kidney energy, that's a lot of what the womb warming bundle does is really um, nourishing our kidneys. And so we'll just do like a slow circle. I'm just gonna show you on one side, the different points. I might alternate actually, because I think it'll be easier for Jackie to film, but um, you know, just slow circles and you'll stay on each spot either until it's too hot, like you don't want it to feel too hot, um, then you'll move on, but then you can actually come back to it. So like, Come back to it after you've done all the other points. The next one is on the spleen channel. I think I gave you guys spleen three, and that is you find this this kind of joint of the big toe, and you go whoop, right under it until your finger falls, and it's right where the skin texture changes, like from the top of the foot to the bottom of the foot. It's right on that line, and we'll do slow circles there. And this is on the spleen channel. The spleen energy has a lot to do with earth energy. Our digestive organs, the kidney has more to do with water and yin. So earth energy has a lot more to do with like our center, how we hold, it's like mother earth energy. Um, so really boosting our spleen energy is really important. If you tend to have like loose stool, um, you know, our digestive upset, definitely the spleen. Then we'll also find this, this little kidney ankle. Um, ankle joint and right behind that also where my finger falls in this is kidney three this is also important to do if you have any yin deficiency water stuff high fsh we really want to nourish the yin these are all great for anxiety for just kind of grounding your energy and i'm just doing slow circles Um, if you have, I don't think this is in your guide, but I'm going to give you guys a little freebie since you're here. If you tend to have PCOS or dampness, you don't necessarily need to do moxa on it, but this kind of, if you go up along the inside of the leg, there's like a little pocket you'll fall into right under the knee. It might be tender. If you have cysts or PCOS or like fluid metabolism issues, this is an area where you might wanna get into. And if your finger feels cold in there, which it does for Connie, I was gonna say me, my finger felt cold, but um, you can do that there too. This helps with um, working through some of that buildup of water, like dampness. And then also on the outside of the knee, I find this little like a uh, knee joint here and I hold my hand under it. Yeah, and then right below where my hand is, there's a point there. This is just a really good immune boosting point for all of us, so we'll do that. Um, I'm gonna go to the abdomen and I'm gonna show you for all of these points where you could do, I'm gonna take this castor oil off, I'm just putting, the moxa into the extinguisher, but I'm going to keep it face up so it doesn't go out. Sorry. <laughs> and then we just pull this off. Um, sorry, it's a little cold. All of these points, if you um, don't have endometriosis or fibroids or block tubes, you'll do in those slow circles. 
I'm going to show you pegging now, just um, so that if you have block tubes or fibroids or endometriosis, we actually want to break up that blood stasis. So along all the same points, which is like under the belly button, instead of the slow circles, which is what you'll do if you've had recurrent miscarriages or unexplained infertility, or you don't have a lot of cramping with your period, instead, you'll just do like a pecking motion. And definitely notice on all of this, I'm not touching the skin. I'm staying like an inch away from the skin. We're just kind of getting the heat in there, but obviously we don't want to burn ourselves. There are some techniques in China, we're using direct moxin or actually burning it on the skin. It's also sometimes, yeah, it's also sometimes called scarring moxa. So uh, no, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, just pecking. If you have high blood pressure, you don't wanna do moxa above the belly button. I rarely do moxa above the belly button unless it's like a joint injury or something. If you have fallopian tube blockage, you'll do this on the sides here and you want to feel the heat like you can get it hot again if it gets too hot you'll switch to a different spot but you want to you know stay on each spot back and forth for at least five minutes this also just innervates blood and chi so you'll be bringing blood and chi flow to your womb to your ovaries to your fallopian tubes and circles would just kind of look like this. This is amazing on your low back too, especially if you have had recurrent miscarriages, if you tend to have any kind of like deficiency symptoms, like um, if you have low back pain before your period, that's a really indication that you can do moxa on your low back. It's great for um, your partner's health too. So, okay. I think we have time for it. What time is it? We have time for some questions. Michael? Oh, right. I've got a couple questions. Okay. Um, these two are about womb massage. Uh, instead of the hot towel, can you use a hot water bottle? Good. Um, yeah, you can. Basically, anything that introduces heat. Um, I'm just gonna sit. <laughs> I think this is a kid. Yeah, you can definitely use um a hot water bottle. Anything that will keep the castor oil hot for sure. It's more of just about getting the castor oil to kind of penetrate into the skin, which it needs heat to do. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, and can you do the castor oil pack before you do womb massage, kind of reverse the order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Awesome. I mean, actually that is good because it can like soften up the area first and then you do the massage. So that that's a great way to do it too. Love it. I have a question as well. Sorry, go question. It. They should see you. You should like okay. go in there and be like, <laughs> Hi, this is Jack. In case you write to the oh, sister. Yes, you did. What did you clean the flannel? Oh, I so I just throw it in the wash. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure with the oil. Yeah, well, you don't want to like get it on your clothes. So usually I'll like rinse, rinse it off as much and then just like throw it in with okay. the wash. Makes yeah, sense. that's a good question. Awesome. That's a great question, Jack. And this is a good one. Um, do you have to worry about using moxa if you have had surgery in that area? I'm thinking specifically the abdomen. So it's actually really good if you've had surgery, but I would let it get to a point where it's healing. Um, like post-surgically, um, I would say give it, you know, we don't want to like invigorate the blood while it's healing, which moxa does and invigorates blood. We want to... Um, you know, let it heal so that it, the skin starts to close and the scars start to heal, but also invigoration of blood is what ultimately heals scars. Um, so I would give it like a month before you do it, but then I would actually focus on that area. Awesome. Does the same kind of go for wound massage after surgery? Yeah, wound massage, I'd be a little more careful after surgery. Um, it's like a little more manipulative and a little, I, I would definitely get your hands on, you know, with maybe wound healing oil, but I wouldn't use castor oil, um, let things kind of settle, but like just getting your hands on and maybe like gently feeling like, you know, sometimes I find that like the work we do, that's almost just on like an energetic, like just physical level. It's almost like a, a lymphatic type level. It's like, you're barely putting like a nickel's worth of pressure on, but that can really um, pull our chi to it and help us heal. 
Awesome. Um, I think that are some of the highlights. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, if you guys stuck around the whole time, thank you. Don't forget, we do have our special on the, <laughs> on the three oils and the moxa. You'll get the moxa and the extinguisher for free. Um, we also are coming out with a new product, which I'm kind of not supposed to tell you about until um, around like Thanksgiving, but um, it's 10. So this is, I used to have a wellness center in Hoboken. And uh, when I had my wellness center, Thank you. And we had like all kinds of products. Like it wasn't just fertility. Um, I basically had everything because people would come in off the streets and shop. And so it was like everything for health. So all different teas, um, like for headaches and colds and stomach stuff and hangovers. And um, anytime my kids would get something like an ear infection or an eye infection or lice, I would make something. So we had a whole bunch of stuff there. And our number one bestseller was Tension Tamer, which um, I used to get migraines and I would just rub it, like roll it on the back of my neck and my head. So this is not for pregnant women. If you're already pregnant, this is not for you, but it's great to just like throw in your bag. We're doing it so that you have gifts you can give to anybody. It's not just for women. It's for anybody. People love it. So that's coming on. out. You just used it? I just used it on a knot in my back and like so much. Yeah, it, it gets in there. So yeah. it's like tingly. And so, um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for, for joining and um, stay tuned for the membership group, which we're figuring out how to make that work. Stay tuned for the um, womb, wisdom of the womb certified fertility coaching program. I feel like I'm going to have to like go to a hut in the woods and like, <laughs> and like create that um which sounds enticing about now I was gonna say can I come I know I know I mean you kind of live in the hut in the woods <laughs> Um, I feel like, is there anything else that feels like one more question? Um, how is everybody going to know, or like, how are people going to receive the recording? And, um, right. do you want me to, and also receive the link for the oil bundle and then the, the free locks or how to do it instructions. So we're sending out a replay email, I think later today, like once we have it recorded and everything, um, did I start? I just like had a panic that I didn't actually record it. It's recorded. You're okay. Oh my God. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Never mind about the replay. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, we're going to send out the replay and that will have also the link. Um, so we created a separate product because we were only selling Moxa and the extinguisher separately. So we created its own product that's Moxa Plus Extinguisher. So that's the one you have to add. If you just click on the link you get, it will be added automatically. Um, and that will be the discount will be added automatically. But if you add it yourself, you do have to put in the discount code free Moxa and uh, you'll get it. Just be aware that around this time of year, um, postal service gets kind of crazy. Sometimes they don't scan your packages, even though we ship them. Um, so we are still shipping within one to two business days, but um, sometimes. Yeah, the, the our post office is also short staffed. Right, the so post that. office is short staffed, so sometimes they don't scan it when they pick it up, um, even though it's on the way. So there's not much we can do about that. Um, but know that we're shipping still on time. We're we're stocked and ready to go. Um, we do only have 200 of the tension tamers available. Um, so when you get the email for that, if you do want that, um, you know we just have what we have. So. Um, Thank you guys. This felt really good to do. I was still kind of like, I don't know if now's the time to do a live, but awesome. we did it. And uh, thanks for being here with Thank us. You. And uh, hopefully we we answered your questions. And if we didn't, just reach out to the Moon Sister support team. They're amazing. And uh, I'm sure they have answers for you. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Bye, Allie. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Connie. <laughs>